Let me tell you the story of a bro named Sisyphus. In Greek mythology, there is a guy named Sisyphus. He witnesses a ruler's daughter get kidnapped by Zeus, and he bears witness to the atrocity of kidnapping of a female. Zeus punishes him for speaking out against him. He gives him immortality. Sisyphus must roll a rock up a mountain for eternity. So well, the rock rolls back down and Sisyphus has to run back down and roll the rock back up. This is an absurd punishment, an eternity of rolling a rock up a hill. But Sisyphus didn't approach this as if it was a punishment. He learned to love the process. He learned to love the absurdity. He learned to love the rock. You see, in powerlifting, you have to learn to love the absurdity of training. You have to constantly go in the gym. Sometimes you're not gonna make progress. Sometimes you're gonna be going backwards. Sometimes the rock is rolling down the hill. Sometimes it's at the top of the mountain. But in powerlifting, 99% of the time, you're pushing that rock up the hill. You are Sisyphus. If you don't fall in love with the rock, chances are you'll never make it to the top of the mountain. You see, strength progresses, not linearly, but it's almost like a positively sloped, trending sinusoidal wave function. It goes up, it goes down, but the ultimate trajectory is a positive. If you don't love the process of beating yourself down and building yourself back up, chances are you're not gonna make it to the top. Chances are you're not gonna be competing for an all-time world record. Chances are you should choose a different sport. So many people are in powerlifting for the wrong reasons. They say that they're sacrificing aspects of their life in order to put pounds on their total. It's not a sacrifice. You chose to go into powerlifting. The thing with powerlifting is it's not a pretty sport. You're not going to make millions of dollars doing powerlifting. Powerlifting is not a sport for the rich. It's a sport for the people rich in mindset. It's a sport for the people who are rich in the grit that it takes to grind something out. Powerlifting is hard. It's not eating whatever you want, sleeping whenever you want, going and taking your sets whenever you want. It's more than just a time in the gym. The memes that are associated with powerlifting are not accurate at the high level. It's only accurate at the lower level. So let's let's break down the stereotypes that come with powerlifters. What is a powerlifter? A powerlifter is a large being who eats whatever he wants. A powerlifter takes 15 minutes between sets, can take naps in between sets. They do singles, they don't do cardio. They don't do stretching, they are immobile. So let's take a look at what the top level lifters do. If you look at their Instagram stories, they're constantly doing not the stereotypes, especially the people who share it more. John Hack doesn't really share what he does outside of the gym very much. He's just here having fun. Dan Bell is here having fun. The top two powerlifters in history, John Hack, Dan Bell, are in powerlifting to have fun. They love the sport, they love lifting. And that love for the sport is why they are at the top. They love the process of powerlifting. They love lifting. Hitting all these PRs, these massive numbers, these mind boggling numbers, 1200 pound squats, 900 pound deadlifts, 2600 pound totals, just under 2300 pounds at 220 pounds, 10 times body weight totals. It's because they love the sport. You see, if you don't love the sport, you're not gonna have the passion for it. You're not gonna enjoy the process that it takes to become strong. You see, it it's really hard to become strong because at the top level, you have to do the cardio. You have to do the mobility work. You have to eat on a regimen. Beef and rice, chicken and rice, eggs, potatoes. You're not going out, you're not having Sour Patch Kids every time that you go to the gym. That's a meme. That's not what people do at the top. What they do at the top is they have a shaker cup full of dextrose intra-set carbs along with vasodilators in order to fuel themselves through the lift. They're not just snacking unambiguously on whatever sugary treat they have. You gotta track your calories because you gotta make sure that you're fueling yourself enough, but not too much. You see, at the top level, those power lifters, they're doing the cardio, they're doing the mobility, they're doing the nutrition. They're, they're eating like bodybuilders. They're doing multiple sets. The trend right now, as expressed by Death Grip Derek, by Joe Sullivan, by Dawson Windham, Shane Hunt, these are all top level lifters. They are using kitchen timers in between their sets. Make sure that they have 60 seconds between accessories. 
90 seconds between higher intensity accessories, two to four minutes in between compound movement sets. They are in doing cardio when lifting weights. They're warming up with cardio. They're doing the mobility work. They're spending hours every week stretching, doing mobility work. Because at the end of the day, you get two lifters doing the exact same program, eating and drinking the exact same things, taking the exact same extracurricular supplements. The lifter who does more to ensure that he is recovering is the lifter that's gonna end up winning. If these two lifters go head to head, they weigh the same, they're doing the same things. The one that recovers more is the better lifter. Powerlifting is not about how heavy can you lift. It's about how heavy can you recover from? How heavy can you lift and still recover? Dan Bell took 1,005 pounds for a double. It took him 30 days to recover. You know what things help you recover? It's the cardio, it's the nutrition, it's the hydration, it's the sleeping, it's the small things that you do, like red light therapy, meditation, because your body can't tell the difference between physical, mental, and emotional stressors. So you've got to meditate, you've got to set goals, you've got to reduce your stressors in your life. You gotta push yourself to do the things that other people aren't doing, to do the things that people aren't doing. You wanna set an all-time world record? You know how many people hold all-time world records at a single time? One, one per class. The total, Dan Bell. Squat is Vlad. The bench, Julius Maddox. The deadlift, we're not gonna talk about deadlifts, but there's only one person who can hold an all-time world record at a single time. You can break it down into weight classes, but at the end of the day, you know what matters is what you're doing outside of the gym to recover. The extra effort that you put into powerlifting outside of the gym is what matters. And if you can't love that, if you can't fall in love with the process that it takes to become strong, you should choose a different sport.